I just want to welcome you here. We are having an awesome time. Just before um, we aired here, uh, the presence of God was just flowing in this place. The Holy Spirit is here right now. So we're just going to continue that and just let that uh, Holy Ghost anointing float into your life. They became successful because what would happen is that they would begin to confuse the enemy by praising for a victory that they had not even fought yet. And we're excited because I believe God is about to do something in your life. I have a scripture I want to share with you real quick. And I just thank you, Father, for your release. Into there are people right now that are receiving mantles for ministry. You've been waiting and waiting, saying, God, when's it my turn? Father says it is your turn today. I release you in school. The Lord says that your gift will make room for you. God is uh, setting a platform. And when it's beginning to come together, it's beginning to culminate, it's beginning to make sense. Live from Hagerstown, Maryland, a show that brings Voices of the Prophetic Together. Keepers of the Flame with host Brian Lake. Hi, I'm Brian Lake, your host of Keepers of the Flame. And we just want to welcome you here today. We have uh, another very special guest, and I believe you are going to be very blessed today. And I believe God's doing a, really a new thing in the body of Christ. And I believe He's um, incorporating in, in a much deeper level um, worship into the body of Christ because I believe through that it draws us into a deeper level of intimacy. So today, our guest, he is a worship leader, he's evangelist, and his passion is to lead people into deeper realms of glory and intimacy with the Father through worship and ministering the Word of God. His desire is to see the church function like in the books of Acts. My guest is Damon Stewart. It's good to have you, Damon. Thank you, Brian. Yep. All the way from Chicago, right? That's correct. Right outside of Chicago? North suburbs. Well, good. Yeah. So how do you like it out there in the wintertime? Um, I've been there a few times in the winter. You get used to it. I'll just put it that way. Well, okay. Well, I'm not used to it yet. Multiple layers. <laughs> It, it, it's pretty cold out there. It is. I'm a southern boy, so it took a little oh, yeah, while. Oh, yeah? From where? Uh, grew up si outside a little bit of Texas, but primarily really? Oklahoma. Well, how'd you get in Chicago? Uh, I met a wife. Ah, uh, <laughs> I did it. She uh, is from uh, the Chicago area. We met at uh, Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, wow. So, so you're the one that moved in. Yes, See, I, my wife, I obeyed the voice of the... No. My wife moved to me. Oh, okay. I was kinda, blessed. I didn't learn from that Oklahoma. lesson. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, bless God. Well, it's good to have you. Um, Thank you. We've had the opportunity to minister together a couple different times. You've ministered at our church, um, and you really move in um, an area that I really love, and it, it just draws me deeper into the presence of God, and that is through your worship. Um, there's different, you know, prophetic worship. There's different types of worship, but what you, in my opinion, that you operate in is a more of a passionate, intimate worship. And so do you feel that, that worship is important for the body of Christ? And well, it's very important. Um, I love studying in the, in the Old Testament alone, you know, with David. But even before David was, you know, commissioning the temple to be built, you know, you see all the things about the temple in the earlier chapters. Mm -hmm. And there was so much emphasis on the type of worship that the Lord wanted. Mm -hmm. And there's even a, a whole section there that talks about the prophetic worship mm -hmm. that goes forth. So God has always made worship a vital part of our walk with Him. Mm -hmm. So is worship really for us or is it maybe for Him? Well, it is for Him ultimately. Mm -hmm. But I find that as we become worshipers that we become more like Him. Mm -hmm. Because when we spend time in that intimacy, I always say it's like a, you know, your iPhone needs to be charged up to your computer for iTunes. Right. That's what worship is. We're just syncing up with the Father. Mm. You know, and we're getting those downloads when we need them, and we're getting that connection mm. that's immediate right away. Wow. So we're actually coming into rhythm with what is happening in heaven. Exactly. Yeah. So. And it also moves us into different realms of uh, the giftings that he's even given us. Wow. So um, maybe you could describe, you know, some of your services you, that you've had and some of the experiences, what begins to happen in some of your worship experience. Well, I find that, you know, when I'm leading worship, my main goal is 
always been the same, and it will always be this. Lord, I want to take the people who are coming tonight, because they come expecting. Mm -hmm. They want to have an encounter with Him. But the purpose is we want to come together in that corporate setting and begin to worship the Father in such intimacy that you almost feel like you're there in the throne room with Him. Mm -hmm. You know, because I always envision in Revelation, you know, the elders and the saints, they fall down. They're casting their crowns before him. You can just envision this wonderful worship taking place, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm like, but what is good later is good for us now. But I think sometimes we just didn't understand what it means to get in there with him. Mm -hmm. But I think worship has just been so expanding the last few years. And, you know, God is taking worship to a whole new place. But it goes back to those who are really hungry and thirsty for it. Mm -hmm. So that's the key. That's the key. To be so, you know, like you asked in the services, sometimes worship can go, you know, 30, 40 minutes. Sometimes it can go an hour and a half. We're not set on time. So, like in, in most services, you know, a lot of churches that I've experienced throughout America, yeah. there's a set time. It's, it's part of the program. And yeah. so we sing these songs and we end at a certain time. Is that what God really wants? Is that his desire to have it all pre-programmed and, and to do it our way? <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the pre-programmed, <laughs> but I do understand there's a need for it, some structure, you sure, know, and yeah. God is for structure, but not at the cost of hindering the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, that's the key. You know, what cost are you willing to push Him aside and, and make yourself what you want it to be instead of what he is wanting it to mm -hmm. be. Yeah, that's what I was wanting to hear. Yeah. <laughs> because that's my heart too. Yeah. Because so many times that we have we limit God and the Holy Spirit in, in his house. And and we don't realize that it is his house. It's supposed to be his house, yes. but we've taken over the house and not allowed him to have his house. So, you know, I, I believe your heart, what you're saying is that there has to be that flow of the Holy Spirit. Man. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, right? It's all about the Holy Spirit because He was sent to be our comforter and guide. Mm -hmm. And that means in worship. He is the one who is guiding us from this moment into that next moment in worship. Mm -hmm. That man, we're just overwhelmed by His presence and the anointing begins to fall. And once you've tasted the presence of the Lord, there's no going back. I, I don't know how you could ever go back. There's just nothing to go back to. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about services that are programmed, you know, they haven't tasted mm. the presence of, the God, of, our, of our holy God mm. who can do so much. And just imagine people coming to a church service on a Sunday morning and there's people who are hurting mm -hmm. physically, emotionally. There's probably marriages that are teetering on maybe going south. And they're coming to church to get something from God. And I think as leaders or pastors and worship leaders, it's our job to make sure that we've done everything to prepare for a service where the Holy Spirit can touch and move So lives. how do you prepare for a service? Well, you know, like when I have a, a service just recently two weeks ago, we had a huge, uh, a huge service that night, but I spent a whole week just in preparation for that service. My whole aspect is spending time in prayer, praying in the Spirit, which means speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. which is a very vital part. Um, but I'm also asking the Lord, what is the one or two songs that need to be sung for that night? Mm -hmm. Because there's something about a song that has an anointing that's going to start touching hearts and people's hearts are going to start opening up and God's going to start moving. Mm -hmm. So then he'll usually give me like two or three songs and that's where I kind of build off my list of songs that I'm probably going to do. Then I'm asking him, okay, well, what is the word you want me to speak for that night? Mm -hmm. Because you have a word for these, this body or this pastor. And so there's a culmination of all these things that God is doing leading up into that week, mm. you know, before we even do a service before I step in there. Wow. But so, the final thing, like I said before, is this. We have to be in your presence tonight. Mm. Because if nothing else, we've just wasted our time and his time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, and, and when he shows up and manifests himself, it, it's in that place that people are transformed. They can't stay yeah. the same no. when his presence is so strong in a service. No. And um, like our services that we have at our church, you know, that's our heart. We want to have the habitation of God, not just a visitation of God, but for him to stay there. And I believe um, that is cultivated and nurtured through worship. Yes. But I believe also there's a difference between worship and praise, is there not? That's true. Praise is usually a, I don't want to just say it is specifically, but it's usually a, a heart giving of thanksgiving. Mm. 
mm-hmm. you know, or declaring who he is, you know. Uh, but worship is something about touching his heart. Mm. And that's what worship means to me. I want to touch his heart. Mm-hmm. I don't want, God, what can you do for me? I got a list a mile long I could give you. No, I'm pushing that aside because I just want to worship you. I want to touch your heart tonight. Mm. So that's what worship, my definition of worship so would be. So it's really not coming to entertain the people that are in service. No, I just want to take them with me yeah. to go to there. Mm-hmm. Into another realm, yeah. into another dimension. And, and I, you know, a lot of people don't understand that, that we can actually um, move from the natural realm into a supernatural realm where there's another dimension. Yeah. Um, the, the glorious realm, there's um, angelic activity happening. The supernat- Things are happening beyond what we can see with our natural eyes. So we, through worship and praise, we can move into that place. We get beyond the flesh. We get beyond all of our problems. And you get to a higher place above all the resistance, all the turbulence. And you just enter into a place of flow and peace and just the presence of God, the glorious realm of him. Amen. Is that right? That's, that's it. Dead on. You nailed it. Man, I just, well, you see, when you, when you begin to talk about this stuff, it just draws something out of me because, listen, I, I don't play a piano. I don't sing. Can't sing. But I can still worship. You can. We're all called to worship, are we not? Are we? Not? Hey, when we leave this earth, that's the one thing we will still be doing yeah. is worship. Whether we can sing well or not or play, but we can worship him. Yeah. And it comes out of our heart, a deep place. Right, because that's the part of that relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just so I can be called a Christian. Right. I want to become Christ like. We'll be right back after these messages. For you, our viewers, we would like to present this exclusive special offer from Brian Lake Ministries. Experience anointed teaching, training, motivation, and inspiration from today's special guest at a price just for you, our viewers. This is a limited time offer and is only available while inventory lasts. To order, visit www.brianlake.org or write Brian Lake Ministries, P.O. Box 305, Needmore, Pennsylvania, 17238. Be sure to ask for the special offer number shown on the screen. Now, back to our broadcast. And so he takes us into that place as we seek and hunger. And the funny thing is, is that the more you keep asking God, I want to be more hungry for you. He is really good about making that little volume go a little bit higher for more, you know, because he wants it too, even more than we could ever ask, you know. And I think that's why sometimes even in worship, like in a Sunday morning service, we think, well, because we did our three songs that, you know, God's presence is here. Right. But that may not necessarily be true because too many people rely on emotion versus the anointing, you know. Mm. And it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Mm-hmm. Not because you've got goosebumps, because you love a favorite chorus. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's a big difference. And I think the body of Christ has got to come into that alignment where worship is so important that when the presence of God comes, just imagine, it's so much easier for you to get up and speak as a pastor and begin to give that word because we want to rhyme a word. Mm-hmm from our pastor and our leader who's going to deliver. And what better way after we've all been in the present is a corporate body. Mm -hmm. You know, the bride has been with the bride. You know, Mm -hmm. we've been there with him. And now he's like ready to just bless his children, Mm -hmm. you know, abundantly. So it's an awesome thing. So so the ideal thing is that when we come to a church service, um, any conference or anything like that, that everybody that comes, they should already come worshiping. The problem I think that most people have is that they come and then they begin to worship or right. try to break through and, and get rid of all their weak, their thoughts, all this stuff. So we have to, to find our way through all that stuff when we should already be worshiping at home every day of the week. Right. I, I, like I said, you know, we, as a worship leader, I always say, you know, if you do three songs, by the third song, you finally got almost their attention by this point. Right. So we hadn't even really got to move yet. Yeah. Um, so that's why I always say, you know, I don't understand churches is two, three songs and they're done. Mm-hmm. This is a, a, a foreign concept to me. <laughs> but I've always said, too, if people did come after having spent time in prayer and in worship every day during the week, just imagine wow. what Sunday morning would look like. It would almost sound like the upper room. Well, that's why I always say the book of Acts is like one of those things I want to see because if it was good enough then, it has to be more than enough for us now. Yeah. But we just got to be hungry for it. Hungry. 
Yeah, and you know, a lot of times I'm in services, I'm always asking, how many's hungry? Because I'm looking for somebody that is saying, God, I want you more than anything else. Yeah. I need you. I'm desiring you. I want to worship you. Because it's those people, when I, like you said earlier, uh, the worship creates that atmosphere or establishes it that we can take off and go deeper in Him. And He comes and He just rests upon us. Yes. And also it creates that flow for the minister, whoever's ministering, to be able to to move freely and it, it pulls something through them yeah. a revelation so if people want more from their their minister their pastor then they need to be hungry yes. and pull heaven through them right amen amen so do you find that when you're worshiping if, if people are tuned in or they're not tuned in uh you know i have to say for the most part um i'm usually in a special kind of service or i'm in a conference right so in that type of setting, people are already expecting and they're hungry. A lot of times with conferences. So it just, you know, you kind of can just step right into it. And within by the second and third song, everybody's already soaring mm -hmm. into that, that awesome place, you know, where God can just begin to move right in and touch his people. And, and it does help the minister who's speaking yeah. because they can move in the gifts and those things much, much quicker. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it's a unity. Absolutely. You know, I always love that part in the book of Acts, you know, when they gathered together, they worshiped and they sang psalms and they shared with the word of the Lord. But it always says they were in one accord. Right. There was such a unity there. And then most of the time it would say after that, and the place was shaken. Mm -hmm. I want to see that. I want to be in a service where we're being shaken f physically, you mm -hmm. know, because the presence of God is so weighty, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be something awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So in some of your meetings, have you seen some powerful things happen? Testimonies and uh, yeah, one of my favorite Holy Spirit. Well, one of my favorite uh, things I love to share is a couple years ago I was ministering in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, leading up to me going to that place, um, there was and you know, Solomon's dedicating the temple in uh, the Old Testament. And I was just kind of stuck on that chapter where he was dedicating and the glory of God came in so strong that no one could stand. The musicians, everybody had to quit playing. And I kept saying, Lord, why am I stuck on this? And I just kept dwelling on that. And then I just began to pray, Lord, why can't I see that? It just all of a sudden occurred to me, why can't we see this? Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't have grace. Jesus hadn't been crucified on the cross. And yet they're getting this powerful manifestation of God's presence. I said, so if they saw it, and you're not a respecter of persons, we get to see this too. Mm -hmm. So I'm leading worship in the, uh, that morning, it's Sunday morning, and we're only on the second song. By the time I hit the chorus for the second time, I saw the cloud come in the, the auditorium. You, you physically saw it? Physically saw it. With your eyes? With my eyes, as I'm playing. Mm. And then there was a whole group of teenagers in the back, you know, and they had come in, they were just cutting up a little bit in the back. No altar call, no nothing. They all ran up to the front of the altar, weeping, asking, them, asking the Lord to save them. Oh, my. Wow. Because of this presence was so strong. Mm. It began to intensify to the point that none of us could even continue playing mm. except for one guitar player. And he kept playing the course <laughs> over and the rest of us were laid out on the floor. I couldn't even, I don't remember how long that was. Wow. But later that day as, uh, as I was thinking about the service, and the service was phenomenal, I said, Lord, wh what did I just see? He said, because you wanted to see mm. what you read in Solomon. Wow. I'll let you get a taste of it. Wow. He said, if my people would hunger for this, they would see it more. Mm. I'm hungry. And so I'm, I'm hungry. I, I haven't seen it since, but I want it. I want it too. Yeah. How many watching you want this? And how about the audience out here? Are you wanting this? We have to be hungry for this. We have to be hungry for the things of God. We have to press into these things and, and to desire them and, and just you know, lay before him, seeking and fasting and praying and just saying, God, we surrender everything to you. That's right. And again, I really believe we, we do it through um, worshiping. Whether we're playing or not, there's, there's a, our heart. Because, right. you know, he's searching for what? The true worshipers. Right. He's searching. So he's the greatest search engine, not <laughs> Yahoo or Google. He's out there searching, right. looking in, in churches and services across America, searching for the ones that are hungry after him. Yes, for his presence. And, and if we're not hungry, if we don't desire him, that search engine will pass over us until right. we are hungry. Amen. And so if we want the things of God, we have to stir that gift up. We have to stir that hunger up inside of us. And we can stir it up. Yes. Can we not? The church is... 
ripe for it right now. Mm. You know, we've settled, I think, a little bit too much for what was easy. Yeah. You know, and um, a lot of times church is just a great place for us to meet socially. Socially. And, and none of those things are wrong in and themselves. Right. But the There's whole a bigger point, purpose, it's right? a bigger purpose, and it goes back to the book of Acts. Yeah. You know, God wants to do some shaking. Yeah. And he wants to show himself strong and mighty. Yeah. Because right now we need it more than ever, not only in church, but in our country. Mm -hmm. I believe he wants to use the, the church body to change the culture. He does. Instead of the, the culture changing the church. Exactly. And that's what's been happening. Yeah. So what do you feel is one of the biggest concerns for the church body? Uh, the biggest concerns is not allowing the Holy Spirit to move. Mm. I think that, uh, the enemy's done one of the biggest damages by making speaking in tongues yeah. something that we shouldn't do. Mm. And it's the most powerful, effective prayer language that we have. And it also can be carried over into worship because when you start to sing in the Spirit in tongues, mm. man, God can do so much even in that. So, so when you minister a lot of times, that happens with you? It does, but I only do it when I really feel that unction of the Holy Spirit to do so. Mm. And, but then there's times that He wants me to give uh, just a prophetic word or a prophetic song. And, you know, but I always try to say, Lord, let it just be for what these people need tonight. Mm -hmm. you know, because they need something from you. Right. We all need, yeah. need Him, don't we? We always need Him. And I believe a lot of times, you know, we, we need him. There's no question. But he needs us. He needs us to worship him. Yeah. Because, you know, that's why he created us. So we could worship and love him and choose to worship him. Right. Not because we come to church and, and because we're doing it and we have to. But because we come to church because we, we desire to worship him, to glorify him, to exalt him. Right. But, but that's kind of like the relationship, you know. It's a relationship. I can't be a friend with you if I'm just one-sided. Right. It takes both of us. Constantly communion. communion and talking Fellowship. and those kinds of things. Yep. And that's the relationship. And yeah. through that, we, there becomes a friendship. So yep. we can have that friendship with the Holy Spirit. You most certainly can. Yeah. So communion, that, that rhythm with God. We are close to Him. So when you minister in things, you are actually co-laboring with the Holy Spirit. I couldn't do it without Him. Mm -hmm. My uh, prayer every time I do a service is that Holy Spirit, I can't do this without you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to try to. Mm -hmm. Because it's just a performance if right. you're not in it. So I can't go do this unless he's right there with me. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's just like sugar and Kool-Aid. they got to go together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Um, and, and you have a couple CDs. And this one here is Fall in Love. And this is an instrumental. Um, can you tell us about this, how this... Well, Fall in Love came along because of uh, the CD you're holding behind, uh, You Rain, and a couple other things I've done project-wise. There are certain songs on the CDs that people really liked, and they're like, why don't you just make an instrumental from those songs? So mm -hmm. that's what we did, and, and so we just made that available here in the, I don't know, past year or okay. so. So if people are wanting to get this, uh, they can go to our website, go to brianlake.org and just log in there and, and you can order this. And so this one you were telling me that you have this one available, um, MP3? Yes, uh, Urain is now available as free downloads um, if you go to our website. So you're just giving it away? I'm just giving it away. Wow. So we did have it, you know, for sale the first couple of years, but it's been out there for a little bit now. And I just really felt by the Lord, the Lord just says, I want you to start just giving it away as digital, free wow. digital downloads. Wow. So. And have you heard testimonies back from? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, it's a funny, you know, people say a certain song did this for them and a certain song touched them in this way. And, and I'm always amazed because I have my favorites, you know, on there and I always think, well, it's got to be the one I really liked. But, yeah. you know. It's never that way because everybody's going through a different place, mm -hmm. a different walk. Uh, so a certain lyric or a certain chorus may just do something in their heart and pierces them, you know. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, and I'll get testimony, oh, it just brought me into a deeper place with the Lord. And I said, well, then that was what was desired. Yeah, and I think that is actually what I felt uh, when you ministered here before through worship. That when you do uh, minister through worship, it does bring you into a place of deeper intimacy. You, you have a, a greater desire, a greater hunger, like we're talking about, to fellowship with Him. Yes. And when you got up the first time, it was just like the Holy Spirit came immediately. It wasn't like that we really had, like before we were talking about having the press through. Right. But He just was there. He was there. And it was just instant. So, and I believe with that, 
you've um, cultivated that over the years, and you know, you just know how to enter into that place, right? I do, and the, the funny story about how to learn all that was simple because I'm a PK, a mm. preacher's kid. Oh, really? But I uh, ran away from the Lord for a few years. Mm. And as I did, I really got involved in everything. I mean, drinking, alcohol, drugs, pornography, everything. Mm. I mean, when I do something, I do it hardcore. Mm. So, long story short, I got bribed into going to a Benny Hinn crusade. Oh, okay. This is early 90s in Dallas, Texas. So they were going to pay me to go to this conference. <laughs> so nonetheless, we go, and because of my mom's uh, work relationship with the doctor, this doctor was the one who checked the miracles. So he gave us all the reserved seating up front. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know anything about Benny Hinn at this time. I was, if you had seen me, <laughs> I had a black mohawk kind of thing. A mohawk? Mo yeah, <laughs> earring. I mean, I was hardcore everything. And so, but the worship and the Benny Hinn Crusade was the first thing I noticed. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't just do a few songs just to do it. So at that time, were you playing piano? No, I had, I had stopped playing. You know, I'd done that all my childhood years growing up. But in my early 19s and early 20s, I wasn't. And, um, but there was an anointing that kept increasing as the worship went on. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know about this. So anyway, that night, I wrestled with God. I gave my heart to him instead. I wasn't winning the battle. But I made a deal with him. I said, if you would take away all of my bondage and all this junk, I'll give my life to you. And as soon as I said that and I gave my heart to him, there was a hand on my forehead and I was laid out on the floor. I didn't know that Benny Hinn had come off the platform and was laying hands on everybody in the front row. Oh, wow. So what cultivated for me from that point on was Benny Hinn understood the worship brings the presence and the anointing. Right. And I began to watch how he operated mm. by watching his shows. Or what go, I went to many crusades. And God just allowed me to begin to see in the spirit what was happening. And so when worship became part of my life as far as doing it, I, I kind of knew. You know, I just knew where I had to take this. Mm. That, you know, people have to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit because my life was forever changed by that encounter. Mm. So everybody needs to <laughs> experience that. Yeah. So that's how, how I cultivated that over the years. Wow. Yeah, I, I know, you know, I've been to Benny Hinn's Crusades too. And with the worship like you're talking about, it's like the worship keeps going up and it up just and builds. up and up and builds. And then all of a sudden there's an explosion that happens in that arena yes. of miracles, you know, happening, people getting healed. And, and it wouldn't happen if it wasn't for that worship yes. reaching heaven. And that's really? what it took. It took that. And it took 14,000 people being in unity. Unity. Expecting God to do miracles. Right. And when you worship like that, I mean, he you know, heaven's waiting to get off the throne and come down in the midst of all that. Mm. So if you had 300 people in a service expecting that every Sunday, you'd have the book of Acts on a regular wow. basis. Wow. So you're saying that worship is really a key. It's a vital key, mm. just like praying is, mm. just like fasting. They're all part. But worship is one of those things I always say, we're going to build churches, we're going to build ministries, we're going to do everything we can for the kingdom on earth. Mm -hmm. But once we get to heaven, that stuff won't matter anymore. Just mm -hmm. worship. And if there's a place for worship leaders to sign up to lead worship, I'm signing up quickly. Because mm -hmm. I want to lead worship Amen. there too. Amen. So we just have a, another minute here. Um, would you mind praying with the people that's watching? Sure. Just look into that camera and just um, maybe pray for that hunger so they get passionate again. Yeah. Because I believe there's somebody watching right now that, that desires that passion again. So if you would, please. Yes. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just pray for those watching that if you have a deep hunger and you just don't even know what to ask right now, I pray, Holy Spirit, you would just begin to wash over them your presence and you begin to take them in a deeper, deeper place of intimacy so that they would begin to get a revelation of who the Father is because He wants to be with you, walk with you, talk with you, and worship is that key that will just get you to walk with Him. You know, Enoch walked with God, and so can we. And worship just will help you do that. So I just pray a release of freedom that you will be able to worship Him in spirit and in truth, night and day, in Jesus' name. So oh, thank, thank you, you Brian. so much. We love you. So thank you for watching, and we will see you next time on Keepers of Flame.
information on Brian Lake Ministries or the Keepers of the Flame broadcast, please visit our website www.brianlake.org.